the diplomatic strategy of the other side isn't completely changed. And what does that mean for us? What it means for us, for the state of Israel, is that we have to put our cards on the table. We have to become explicit about our needs. You can't expect a U.S. bridging proposal that will take into account Israel's need for defensible borders if you don't talk about defensible borders. And the major point of my, of my address tonight, Yerushalayim, Jerusalem, you cannot get Israeli interests in Jerusalem protected unless you put down a marker on the issue of Jerusalem. So how can you make Jerusalem negotiable in 1993 and retain and demand that you retain a united Jerusalem in 1995? I think what Rabin went through was exactly what we're going through now. You start out by being forthcoming, trying to bring the other side into a negotiation, hoping you can bring that negotiation to a point where you can protect your vital interests but give what's minimally necessary for the other side. And then you realize you have to put down a marker. And that's what Rabin did in 1995. And that's what we have to do today. But despite the fact that Rabin said that Jerusalem must remain united, unfortunately there have been a number of myths that I want to very briefly touch upon that have sustained the idea that we can negotiate and reach a new agreement on dividing Jerusalem. Myth number one is what I call the myth of the blue and the green. The myth of the blue and the green is that, oh, there's an East Jerusalem, there's a West Jerusalem, West Jerusalem is Jewish, East Jerusalem is Palestinian Arab, and so Jerusalem is relatively dividable. We have, as of 2006, 189,000 Jews living there on the eastern part of Jerusalem. It's not a green zone, a green area, it's a mixed area. And the, and, the, and the neighborhoods are right next to each other. Does anybody know the distance between Isawiya and Hebrew University campus on Hard Sophim? 74 meters. That's not a Kalachnikov, that's a slingshot. Myth number two is that the Palestinians might accept some village on the outskirts of Jerusalem as their capital. The Palestinian claim is to the old city and is to Harabayit. And we have to understand that. And therefore the myth of the alternative villages on the outskirts as a basis for dividing Jerusalem is simply not true. The last myth I want to relate to on Jerusalem has to do with demographics. You want to solve demographic problem in Jerusalem? Don't divide the city, build houses. <laughs> build affordable homes. Rework the tax code to give incentives for more construction. And if we build on the eastern parts of Jerusalem, where we've been building for years, let's continue. By the way, if 42% said they needed uh, reasonable housing, 16% said they need jobs. And therefore, Jerusalem should be a national priority in terms of economic development. But these are things we can do tomorrow. We don't need Sai Barakat for that decision. Some people say Jerusalem is easier to solve than you think because it's not a strategic issue. You know, you don't talk about the strategic importance of the Western Wall, like you would talk about the strategic importance of Baal Chatzor or the Jordan Valley. But guess what? First of all, our generals here can tell you all about the strategic importance of Jerusalem as one of the key routes for moving forces to the Jordan Valley, through Malay Adumim and, and down towards the valley. I said we're at a crossroads. We're at a time where we have to articulate our positions, because either the Palestinians are going to go unilateral, the U.S. is going to put a bridging proposal, or maybe both are going to happen. And therefore, what's needed now is clarity 
of the Israeli position, not vagueness. What Uzi Dayan was speaking about, we can't just give abstract answers about our goals. Oh, we want peace. Very nice. Good idea. But we have to talk about, no, we want keeping Jerusalem united, protected. We're not interested in internationalizing the core of Jerusalem, this, this term, the holy basin. It was developed by negotiators. If we don't want international forces in the Jordan Valley, as General Amidor so clearly stated, we do not want international forces in the old city of Jerusalem either. By the way, in 1947, we agreed to internationalization. You know what happened? We got invaded by six Arab armies. And nobody lifted a finger, and the Jewish quarter surrendered and left. So we've, we've tried that. We've been there. And it hasn't worked.